Now let us look at perfect competition in the long run. But before we do that, let me answer two questions that I could not cover when we discussed short run. So let me do that in the next two slides and then we'll move on to long run. We know how a supply curve is derived for a firm under perfect competition and that is given by the rising stretch of the marginal cost curve above the minimum of AVC. Now suppose S1 represents the supply curve for the first firm and, and S2 represents the supply curve for the second firm. And based on this information, we can plot a combined supply curve for first as well as second firm. Now look at the following. When the price is $25, firm 1 is willing to sell 9 units of output to the market. And the same thing with the second firm. At $25, it is willing to sell, say, 9 units of output to the market. Or both of them combined together will sell 18 units of output to the market when, when the price is $25. So this becomes the first point on the supply curve for both firms taken together. When the price is $35, another point on the supply curve. And suppose this first firm is willing to supply 11 units of output to the market and so is the second firm, or both of them together are willing to supply 22 units of output to the market. And in this way, you can plot other points, and when you join them, what you get is a supply curve for both firms taken together. And this is called the combined supply curve. And we have done it for two firms. We can do it for millions of firms around the world. And, and what we'll get is a market supply curve. And what principle have we used to derive a combined supply curve? It's the principle of horizontal aggregation. So this is how we derive a market supply curve. Now let us look at the diagram we examined in the previous video and that is about short-run equilibrium. <clears throat> now, if you look at a price, any price between, say, P1 and P2, P1 and P2, you have these equilibrium points E1 and E2, and any price between P1 and P2, the firm is actually making profits. And then you look at equilibrium points between E2 and E3, and here the firm is incurring losses. And yet all these equilibrium points like E1, E2, E3, or anything in between, all these are referred to as the best point for the firm, or it's referred to as the profit maximizing point for the firm. And we know very well at these profit maximizing points, the firm may be actually making profits or incurring losses. Why do we say this? The reason for this is, this is just mathematically speaking, just an optimization problem. And by that we mean each firm is doing the best it can under the circumstances. Either it is trying to maximize total profits or minimize total losses. And that is all right. Now let us look at the long run phenomena for a firm under perfect competition. In the long run, we know all inputs are variable. So all costs associated in the long run are all variable costs. And based on that, we can figure out long run total cost or can, that can be abbreviated as LTC. Based on LTC, we can figure out long run average cost, which is simply LTC divided by Q. Q is quantity of output. And long run average cost can be abbreviated as LAC. And then we have long run marginal cost, which is abbreviated as LMC, and that is change in LTC divided by change in total output. So these we can calculate. And now let us look at the conditions for equilibrium in the long run. 
and here they are. <coughs> Let me just make it visible for you folks. And that is <coughs> conditions for long run equilibrium. We already have learned all this in the short run. The best point for a firm, and this is true even in the long run, is number one, MR must equal marginal cost of production. And since we are looking at the long run, MR must equal MMC or the long run marginal cost. And the second condition we require for an optimal point or the best point is that marginal cost in the long run or LMC must intersect MR curve from below. So these conditions are universal, these two, and they apply whether we are looking at short run or long run or whether we are looking at perfect competition or some other market structure like imperfect competition. And on top of these two conditions, what we require is, and this is something I'm going to prove to you, and that is no firm under perfect competition can either make profits or incur losses. All, all firms must be in a situation of no profit, no loss in the long run. And let us look at this in terms of a diagram. To understand the long run phenomena, let us look at a diagram that we had used on the previous video. And these diagrams are not drawn to scale. Now on this side, what we have is the world market. And in the world market, we have the world demand in the original situation, let's call it D0, and supply curve in the original situation, let's call it S0. Wherever these two curves intersect, what we have is equilibrium E0, and based on this equilibrium point, we can determine what will be the price in the world market. We call this P0. Now, on this side of the diagram, what we have is from the perspective of one seller. So whatever price is determined in the world market, the seller takes this price as given and tries to do the best it can under the circumstances. So what we have is a horizontal price line. <clears throat> now, since we are looking at the long run, what we draw here are long run marginal cost curves and long run average cost curve. And then you look at this point E0. What you find here is, here MR equals LMC. And also at this point, the LMC curve intersects the MR curve from below. So this must be the profit maximizing point for this firm. And so we have this equilibrium point E0. We can take this to the horizontal axis and we have determined how much output will be produced by this firm. Now, I believe, and I'll show this to you, that E0 represents long run equilibrium for a firm under perfect competition. Now, to see this, look at the following. Suppose for some reason, the world demand for this product increases. And let's call this new demand curve D1, which is a demand curve that has shifted to the right like this. And with this new demand curve, we still have the original supply curve. And so wherever these two curves intersect, we have this new equilibrium point E1. We take this point to the vertical axis and what we have determined is new equilibrium price or the world price has increased and it has become P1. So we see an increase in world price. And let me just straighten this arrow. <clears throat> now, since the world price has increased, the price for this individual firm will increase as well. And so we have a new price line for this small firm under perfect competition. Now, given the new price, we have new average revenue and new marginal revenue. Now, based off 
the diagram for this individual cellar we can easily see that E1 will be the new equilibrium point at price P1. Why? Because here LMC equals MR and number 2 LMC curve intersects MR from below. <clears throat> but here observe that the price P1 is greater than average cost of production and that means the firm is actually making profits at this higher price. Now remember the fourth assumption we had made when we started looking at perfect competition and that is about free entry, free exit. That means it costs nothing for anyone to start a business or quit business. <clears throat> So because of this assumption of free entry, free exit, look at this phenomena. When people in this industry are making money, people who are outside and can join this industry anytime or start this business anytime, what they will do is when they see others making money, they will join this business or get into this business. As they get into this business, what will happen to the supply curve? It will shift to the right. Why? Because this is something you should know. As more and more sellers join the market, the supply curve shifts to the right. And let us call this new supply curve S1. And we have this new supply curve S1 and we have the new demand curve D1. Wherever these two intersect, let's call this E2. And let me just place the supply curve where I want this to be placed. Here somewhere. And so you have this new equilibrium point E2. You take this to the vertical axis and what you have determined is the price. And in this case, what has happened to the price? It is back to where it was. And, and so... And so look at the following. Initially, when the price increased, why? Because of rightward shift of the demand curve, the existing firms in this industry started to make profits or extra profits. Now, when outsiders saw this phenomena, they enter the business. And as they enter the business, they move the supply curve to the right. And as supply curve moved to the right, what has happened to the price? Price started to fall and probably felt back to its original situation. And so, though in the short run, it is possible for a firm under perfect competition to make profits or incur losses. In the long run, it is just not possible. I've shown this when the firm makes profits because of higher prices and then they get wiped out. You can do the same exercise on the other side what happens when firms start to incur losses. Here, what I've written down is the condition for long run equilibrium for a firm under perfect competition. And it's easy to remember because all variables are equal to one another. Now, look at the following. We know price and average revenue are one and the same thing. And when the firm is a price taker, this must equal marginal revenue then we also know that marginal cost must equals marginal revenue for the firm to be at its best point. And of course, there's another condition required, that is marginal cost curve must intersect MR from below. And then when you are looking at long run equilibrium, where we assume free entry, free exit, the firm should not be in a position to make profits or incur losses, or in other words, price must also equal long run average cost. So this is the condition that you require for long run equilibrium for a firm under perfect competition. And this completes our discussion of perfect competition in both short as well as long run. One thing interesting for you to think about is how can a business become big in a market which is characterized by extreme competition and this i think is a good thought for you to ponder over so thanks a lot for your time and we'll move on to the next topic